write a word from the box to complete each sentence in the story. Have a look at these words. Can you read all of the words in the box for me, Le Kang? Basket, chipmunk, rabbit, galop, happen, princess, puppet, suddenly, garden, crumpet. Very good. Lovely work. Okay, so we had to use these words and put them into the correct sentences. Now, before we begin, have a look at this sentence over here, guys. Can you read that for me, Steve? How do you cut the letter in the middle of a sentence? Unless it's a proper noun. So guys, in your homework last night, some of you guys were getting the correct answer, but you were writing it like this. The blaring blank announced the show would begin soon. For this one, the answer is trumpet. A trumpet is a musical instrument that you can play and it makes a loud noise. If you wrote your answer like this, it is incorrect. Trumpet does not need a capital letter unless it's at the beginning of the sentence. The blaring capital T trumpet doesn't make any sense. This is incorrect. The only time we would use a capital letter in the middle of a sentence is if we're using a proper noun. For example, if you're saying a name like Miss Rachel or Hanoi or Vietnam. So for those of you who are a little bit confused about putting in the right word, but getting it wrong, it's because you had a capital letter. So it's really important. Okay, let's do the rest of them. Number two, can you read the full sentence for me, Kiwi? Children fight in front of a little stake in the garden. Good girl, well done. Children sat in front of a little stage in the garden. Amazing. Number three, Mia. Everyone was excited to see the puppet show. Good, go good job. Everyone is excited to see the puppet show. Well done. Okay, number four, Noob. Can you try that one for me? Uh, Quang Ming, can you help with this one while Noob fixes his computer? Number four, a furry. A furry chipmunk or rabbit was the first puppet on stage. Very good. Well done, Quang Ming. So for this answer, you can have chipmunk or rabbit. Both are okay. So a furry, let's go with chipmunk, was the first puppet on stage. Next came a little rabbit puppet. So both would have been fine. So if you wrote a furry rabbit was the first puppet on stage, that's okay. And if you wrote next came a little chipmunk puppet, that's also okay. Both answers are correct. Okay, okay. Number six, who can answer this for me? Can you read for me please? Uh, Mingha. What happened next was a surprise. Good girl. Well done, Ming Ha. Next, number seven, Sal. The rabbit told the chunk. She was really beautiful. Was really a beautiful princess. Good job. The rabbit told the chipmunk she was really a beautiful princess. Number eight, can you read that one for me, please? Ocean. The chipmunk gave a, ra a rabbit. Basket of flowers. Good job. The chipmunk gave the rabbit a basket of flowers. Good job, Ocean. Well done. Number nine, Tweechee, please. The rabbit suddenly disappeared and a beautiful princess stood in her place. Good girl, well done. We wouldn't have the word galloped in there as that is a verb, it's an action word. Good girl, we need this adverb suddenly. The rabbit suddenly disappeared and a beautiful princess took in, stood in her place. So the word suddenly means that something happened all of a sudden. It happened quickly without preparing. Okay, and number 10, Quang Hai, can you read that for me please? Uh, the princess and the chipmunk, I love 
Good job. Lovely. Galloped away on a horse. So galloped is an action word. It's a verb. And it's often a word we use to describe how a horse runs. So it's like running quite quickly. The horse galloped away. It means it ran away quickly. Well done, guys. So really good job. Um, for those of you who got the answer correct, well done. However, some of you got the answer incorrect because you wrote a capital letter in the middle of a sentence. So please be careful. Okay, guys, so let's begin uh, the next part of our homework. So yesterday we learned about four new vocabulary words. The first person's uh, or the first student's sentences I would like to show off are Mia's. Really good job, Mia. Mia, can you please help me read out your lovely sentences? My family go on a trip in a fine... On? On a fine day. Good job. I, I certainly am. I am a student in grade three. Good job. Next. I was brown when I got a plus on my test. Very good. Now be careful here, Mia. This is something that I've noticed Um, students have done been spelling the word proud with the letter N inside. And so this isn't something that I've just noticed in 3E9. In my 3E10 class also, I noticed some students were making this mistake. So please be careful with the spelling of proud. There is no N in this word, proud. Okay, Mia, can you read the next one? And now. Each day, different teachers, teachers announce to all the students, announce to all the students about the school, about good. the school news. Good job. Well done, Mia. Really good work on your sentences and lovely drawings as well. Good girl. Okay, next we have Emma's. Really good job, Emma. Emma, can you go ahead and read your sentences, please? I was proud when I got an A on my test. Good job. When there is a fire drill, I announce to stop the fire. Good job. Three. In my backyard, I feel like it was a Sorry. fine day. Good job. Well done. And next. We certainly should push our chair when in chair in when we don't need it. Good job. Well done, Emma. Really, really oh. good work on your sentences there. Lovely. Okay. Uh, next we have Hannah. Well done, Hannah, on your sentences. Where is Hannah? So I can ask her to read out her wonderful sentences. Okay, Hannah, go ahead. I'm proud when I succeed on my test. Uh, bear with me. So I just noticed. So succeed has two E's in the word. So be careful. So I-S-U-C-C-E-E-D. I'm proud when I succeed on my test. Good girl, Hannah. Next. When I saw the news, I announced it to my family. Good job. It's a fine day to go outside. Good job. We certainly should recycle trash like plastic. Good girl. We certainly should recycle trash to make our environment a lot healthier. Good girl, Hannah. Really wonderful sentences. And last but not least, we have Quang Ming's here. Okay, Quang Ming, can you do me a favor and read your wonderful sentences to the class, please? I feel proud when I draw a perfect drawing. I know now that my cat has been... been has been lost for three days. Who find it first will earn a four, so no, uh, four million dollars. Good job. My brother has a fine glass marble. Amazing. My mom gave me potato chips and I certainly deserve it. 
Good job. Well done, Kwang Ming. Lovely sentences. And thank you for scanning your homework in because it made it very clear and easy to see. So good job to Kwang Ming. Okay, guys, so that is the end of uh, my sentences from your homework. Really good job to the students that I've just shown um, their sentences of. Okay, let's begin our lesson today. Today, we have a reading comprehension and I'm super excited because this is one of my favorite stories uh, from this book. So today we're going to be reading a story called A Fine, Fine School. Now have a look at this essential question. Can you please read the essential question, Zaling? How is learning at school different from learning at home? Good job. Now, this essential question is coming in really handy because at the minute we find ourselves learning at home and not in school. Now, this question isn't asking how is it different learning at school and online. What it's trying to ask is at school, we learn things like mathematics, science, English, Vietnamese. But what kinds of things do you learn at home? What kinds of things do you learn from your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister or your grandma or your grandpa? Who can tell me? I'll give you my first example. So at home, I learned how to cook with my mom. She would help me cook dinner uh, or I would help her cook dinner and she would teach me uh, the ingredients to use in certain dishes. However, when I went to school, I did not learn how to cook. So who can give me an example of something you learn at home, but you don't learn in school? Go ahead, Cindy. Last Sunday, I and my sister learned to how to do fresh fry to, um, to make her father children in all in house. To make the what children in the house? Fresh fries. French fries? Yes. Amazing. Were they tasty? Yes. Very good. Well done, Cindy. So yes, exactly. At home, you learn how to do things like cook. So Cindy was cooking French fries last weekend. Amazing. Noob, what about you? What are some things you learn at home, but you wouldn't learn in school? I told my mom, teach me how to cook, cook rice. Very good. Well done. At home, your mom is teaching you how to cook rice. And these are really important things for you guys to learn. You're not going to learn how to cook in school. So it's really important at home that you're learning how to live in a house and um, have responsibilities for your own home. Mia, what about you? My aunt teach me how to take care of a baby. Very because good. My aunt not a baby. Good job. Is the baby a little baby boy or a little baby girl? A little baby boy. Oh, Mom very, very cute. Very, very, very cute. Well done, Mia. That's something else really important. So for any of you guys who have little baby cousins, like Mia just said, or little baby brothers or little baby sisters, if your mom or dad ever asks you to help them with your baby brother or baby family member, you're learning how to take care of another human being. And these are things that you do not learn how to do in school. Good job. Well done, everybody. Okay, let's have a look. So the genre of our text today is humorous fiction. The word humorous is another way to say funny. So we're reading a funny story today. Have a look. Can you please uh, read for me, Kui Kang? Humorous fiction has characters and events that are funny. As you read, look for mostly, mostly realistic, mostly realistic characters and events. A setting that is familiar familiar to most readers. Funny situations or events. Lovely reading. Thanks, Kui Kang. So humorous fiction has characters and events that are funny. So we should be laughing as we read today. As we read the story, look for mostly realistic characters. So most of the characters are going to be people that you would see in everyday life. Uh, we're going to look at a setting that is familiar to most readers, so it's not going to be outer space on a different planet. It's going to be somewhere like a school or a home or um, a football pitch. We're also going to look out for funny situations or events. Now, 
If you have your journeys book at home, please go and get it now. If not, don't worry, I'm going to show the book on my screen and I will share that with you. Okay guys, so open your book to page 14 or have a look at my screen. Meet the author. Steve, can you read the author for me? Sharon Grinch is working on the book. She sometimes gets stuck. She doesn't know what to write next. When that happens, she goes for a long walk. Does some laundry. Laundry? Laundry or cleans the bath. Room. Then she returned to the computer and started a start writing again. Lovely. Thanks, Steve. So Sharon Creech is the author. Sometimes when she's writing a book, she gets stuck. What that means is she can't think of any ideas to write about. Maybe she doesn't know how uh, to finish the story. So when that happens, she goes for a long walk does some laundry, which means she uh, cleans her clothes or she cleans the bathroom. And once she's had a little break, she goes back to writing. Good job. Okay, can you read uh, about the illustrator for me, Mingha? We bless Sharon Critch thinks Creech? The, Creech thinks the illustrations Harry Bliss drew for a fine fine school are very funny especially the one with Taz dog Tilly Tilly's dog dog in the background this is a cartoon this whose comics comic group appears in daily newspapers he and his family live in Vermont Good job. So Vermont is a place in America, in North America. Lovely reading, Mingha. Thank you very much. So Harry Bliss is the illustrator and Sharon Creech thinks the illustrations he drew are really funny, especially the ones with Tilly's dog. Tilly is our main character in this story. So let's not wait any longer. Let's get stuck straight into our book. Okay, guys, please open your books to page 16 and 17. Let's begin reading. So I'm going to ask you to read. Um, if I ask you to read, you keep reading until I tell you to stop. Uh, let's go for Hannah. Can you start us off, please? Mr. Keen. Mr. Keen was a principal who loved his School. Every morning he strolled down the hallway and saw the children in their classes. He saw them learning shapes and colors and numbers and letters. Good job, Hannah. Thank you. Can you take over, please, Hacker? We saw them reading and writing and drawing and painting. <coughs> He would say, Are these fine children? Are these fine teachers in this fine, fine school? Lovely, thank you. So let's just have a stop here and look at this picture because these illustrations are beautiful. There are so many uh, details here. So if we take a closer look, here's Mr. Keene, the principal peeking his head in at all of his students. Students over here are making a huge dinosaur out of paper mache. Paper mache is uh, toilet paper with glue and water. And if you mix it up, you can put it into shapes. And when it dries, it dries very hard so you can make your own statue. Uh, next, we have here children making pyramids. We have children looking at abstract art from Picasso, a very famous uh, artist. We have students drawing uh, friends with either a unicorn horn or some sort of monster horn. And we have children uh, writing some vocabulary words on the board. It's a fine school with lots of wonderful students in it. Okay, turn over the page. Okay, can you read for me, please? Emma. Near Mr. King's school, Tilly lives with her parents and her brother and her dog. Beans and 
a small house next to a big tree on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays till he went off to school. Lovely. Good job. Leo, can you take over, please? At school, Charlie learned her shape and colors and number and letters. Sometimes when she saw Mr. Keen standing in the hallway, she waved. He Aunt, waved. He waved. Aren't these fine children? He says to himself, on this fine teacher, in this a fine, fine school? Isn't this a fine, fine school? Very good. Okay, I'm going to stop us there for a second. What do you think about Mr. Keene so far? What can you tell about Mr. Keene, the principal, so far? How do you think he feels about his school? What do you think, Ming Huang? His school. Very good. He thinks it's good. How do you know that he thinks his school is good? Yes, mm, the east, mm, is this school is fine. Very good. He keeps saying, isn't this a fine, fine school? He keeps repeating the words fine, fine children, fine teachers, and a fine, fine school. Okay, Tui Chi, can you take over reading for me, please? On the weekends, Saturday and Sunday, Tui climbed her favorite tree and she took beans on walk and mewed him stick and she pushed her brother on a swing and tried to teach him how to skip. Good job. Lei Kang, can you take over? But on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, Tilly went off to school. Bins, Bins? and her Bins and her brother did not like to see her go. Hurry, hurry, hurry home, her brother called. Oh, really good reading, Le Kang. Well done. Okay, how are Tilly's weekends different from her weekdays? How are Tilly's weekends different from her weekdays? So the weekend is Saturday and Sunday, and the weekdays are Monday all the way to Friday. So how are they different for Tilly? How are her weekends and her weekdays different? Kiwi, what do you think? When a uh, weekday, she go, she go to school. Uh, mm -hmm. Good. And on the weekends? On the weekends, she plays with her dog and brother. Good job. Perfect answer, Kiwi. On the weekdays, Tilly goes to school. But on the weekends, she climbs her favorite tree. She takes her dog on a walk. She throws him sticks. She uh, pushes her brother on a swing and teaches him how to skip. So Monday to Friday, she goes to school. And on Saturday and Sunday, she plays with her family. She plays with her brother and her dog, Beans, over here. So Beans looks very serious over here, getting ready for a game of baseball. Okay, okay, let's keep reading. Can you please read for me? I would like Mickey. One day. One day, Mr. King called all the students and teachers together and said, this is such a fine, fine school. I love this school. Let's have more school from now on. Let's have school on Saturday too. Good job. Lovely reading. Quang Hai, can you take over? The teachers and students did not want to go to school on Saturdays, but no one knew how to tell Mr. King that he was so proud of the children and the teachers of all the learning, learning they were doing every day. And so that Saturday, Tilly set off for school. But it's Saturday. What going? What, what about, about what about the swimming? The swings. The swings. Her brother called. Good job. Okay, guys. So I just want to stop and talk about what Mr. Keen has done. Why do you think Mr. Keen is now having school on Saturday too? Is it because he's <laughs> really mean, the principal who wants to see the students get very upset? Is that why he's making school on Saturday too? 
Hannah, what do you think? I think because Mr. King was yeah. so proud of this school. Good job. Well done, Hannah. It's not because Mr. Keene is being a horrible principal. He's looking around at the amazing teachers, the fine students and the wonderful school. And he's thinking, oh, this is such an amazing place with amazing people. Let's have more of it. So he's doing it because he thinks it's a good thing to do. He's doing it because he wants everyone to be even happier. So do you think that Tilly and her brother are going to be very happy about going to school on Saturday. Yes or no? No. 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 Imagine if you went to school Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, all day. It's really important that we have some time off so that we can spend it with our families and spend time to rest. Have a look at the faces in this picture. The teachers don't look happy and the students look very unhappy too. Let's keep reading to find out what happens. Okay, can you read for me, Ocean? The following month, Mr. King's announced this is just a fine, fine school. I love this school. They have more school. From now on, they have a school. From now on. From now on, they have a school on, on Sunday too. Good job. Well done. Thank you. Teddy, can you read uh, the next part for me? The teachers. The teachers and the students did not want to go to school on on Sundays, but one no but one knew how to tell Mr. Keen that he was so proud of the children and the teachers of all the learning they were doing every day. And so that Sunday, Tilly set up for school. But it's Sunday. What about skipping? Her brother called. Lovely. Okay, guys, how would you feel about going to school on Saturday and Sunday? Would you like that? Yes or no? No. 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 I don't think so. I don't think that everyone would be very happy about going to school on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That would mean you would have no time off, no time to spend, to spend with your family, no time to spend playing video games, no time to spend with your friends outside of school, just school all week, seven days a week. That would not be very nice. Let's keep reading. Can you read this page for me or can you start reading Susie? The following month, month Mr. King called everyone together again and said, this is such a fine, fine school. I love this school. Let's have more school. From now on, let's have in the summer too, all summer long, every single day. Good job. Lovely reading, Susie. Okay, guys, how would you feel about this? How would you feel about going to school every day of the week and never having summer holiday? How would you feel? No. 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 That means your whole life you would go to school, no break, no holiday, no time off to do other things. That would not be very good for you. Let's keep reading and find out what happens. Okay, can you read for me, please, with Quang Ming? How much we will learn? He said, we can learn everything. We will learn about numbers and letters, colors and shapes, the Romans and the Egyptians and the Greeks. We will learn about dinosaurs and castles and, and everything. We will learn everything. Very good. Lovely reading. So Mr. Keene has called the students in one more time and said, I've got a great idea. This is a fine, fine school with fine, fine teachers, fine, fine students. Let's have school during the summer holidays. Have a look at Mr. Keen. Notice how he looks in the picture. How is Mr. Keen's face different from the students' faces? Lekang. 
Mr. Nee. Mr. Keen? Mr. Keen is happy, but the student is sad. Very good. The students are sad. Mr. Keen is super happy about this because he thinks he's doing a great job. He still thinks that everybody is happy about this because no one can tell Mr. Keen. Nobody wants to hurt Mr. Keene's feelings. They don't want to upset him by telling him they don't want to go to school. But all the while, the children are getting extremely tired. Have a look at this poster. It says, why not study while you chew? MK from Mr. Keene. Mr. Keene is saying, hey, while you're having lunch, why not read a book and study too? It's getting out of control. Mr. Keene is wanting these students to learn at all points in the day, every day, all day. Let's keep reading. The teachers and the students did not want to go on to school on Saturdays and Sundays and holidays and all summer long, every single day. But no one knew how to tell Mr. Keene that. He was so proud of the children and the teachers, of all the learning they were doing every day. And so, on the first day of summer, Tilly set off for school. But it's summer! What about summer? Her brother called. Have a look here. Have a look at this picture. How do you think her brother is feeling about Tilly having to go to school during the summer holidays? Kwang Hai, what do you think? He feels sad because he doesn't have his sister to play with and he didn't need to play alone. Good job. Really perfect answer, Kwang Hai. Her brother is being neglected. He doesn't have anyone to play with on weekends. He doesn't have anyone to play with when she's at school. And he doesn't have anyone to play with now that it's summer holidays. He wants to learn how to swim, but Tilly's not around to teach him these things. Instead, have a look at Tilly's uh, life. Take home test, test today, huge test Sunday, massive quiz on Saturday, big test tomorrow, the largest test in the entire universe next week. Get more post-its. She is a busy girl with lots of studying. She looks very upset and sad that she has to do this, but yet nobody will tell Mr. Keene because they don't want to upset him. Let's keep reading. Can you read for me, please? Zaling. That day, Chai Ili went to see Mr. Nee Keen. He, he, Mr. Keen. Mr. Keen. He stood. He stood in his office in front of his desk. What a fine, fine school in this. Mr. Keen said, "What amazing things every everyone is learning." Good job. Yes. Tilly said, we certainly are learning some amazing things. A fine, fine school, Mr. Keene said. But, Tilly said, not everyone is learning. What? Mr. Keene said. He looked very worried. Who? Who isn't learning? Tell me and I will see that they learn. My dog, Beans, hasn't learned how to sit, Tilly said. And he hasn't learned how to jump over the creek. Oh. Mr. Keene said, and my little brother hasn't learned how to swing or skip. Oh, Mr. Keene said, and I, she said, but you go to school, Mr. Keene said, to our fine, fine school. True, Tilly said, but I haven't learned how to climb very high in my tree, and I haven't learned how to sit in my tree for a whole hour. Oh, Mr. Keene said. Why do you think that Tilly is telling this to Mr. Keene? Tweechee. Because she is saying to Mr. Keene that there are school for every day so she can teach her dog, her babe, her little brother, and she cannot do what she wants. Good job. She's going to Mr. Keene because she wants to end this. She's going to Mr. Keene. She's being brave. She doesn't want to hurt his feelings, but she needs to tell Mr. Keene that going to school all these days is too much. Let's see what happens. Have a look here. Uh, Cindy, can you read this uh, page for me? That day, Mr. Nee Keene Keen walked up and down the halls. Looking at the children and the teachers, up and down, he walked 
up and down, up and down. Good job, well done. Okay, so have a look at this picture. How does Mr. Keen look here? So no, happy. So not happy. Good job. Happy. Worry, happy. disappointed, I'm not happy. happy. He's finally realizing what he's doing to the students. Look at them. The students are brushing their teeth at school. Uh, this girl is putting 10,000 pencils in her locker. All of the kids are carrying so many notebooks and nobody looks happy anymore. And Mr. Keen has finally realized this. Let's have a look at the next page. The next morning, Mr. Keene called everyone together. The children and the teachers were very worried. Mr. Keene said, this is a fine, fine school with fine children and fine, fine teachers, but not everyone is learning. The children and the teachers were very, very worried. Mr. Keene said, there are dogs who need to learn how to sit and how to jump creeks. What did he mean? Was he going to make their dogs come to school? There are, little, um, there are little brothers and sisters who need to learn how to swing and how to skip. What did he mean? Was he going to make their younger brothers and sisters come to school too? The children and the teachers were very, very, very worried. And you, all of you, children and teachers, you need to learn how to climb a tree and sit in it for an hour, Mr. Keene said. Why do you think the children and the teachers are very, very, very worried right now? Why do you think the children and the teachers are all very worried about Mr. Keene uh, calling them all together and telling them all of this information? What are they worried about? What are they worried about? What do you think, Kui Kang? What has Mr. Keen done every time he calls all the students together and all the teachers together? Hey, Dad, need to learn more. Yeah, perfect. Every time Mr. Keen calls all the teachers and all the students together and talks to them, he ends up giving them more school. So everyone's really worried right now because they think Mr. Keen is going to give them more school. What do you think? Do you think he's about to give them even more school? Yes or no? No. 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 I don't think so. I think he realizes no. they need a break. Let's no. read and find out. Okay. Can you read this page for me? Teddy. The children and the teachers were not worried. Were very worried. Were very worried. And so from now on, we will not have school on Saturday. Sunday or in the summer. Good job. Well done, Teddy. Can you read this page for me, Le Kang? A huge, enormous rolling chair so up to the ceiling, ceiling. and ceiling and float out the window floated. so that floated out the windows so that everyone in the town heard the fine, fine Children and the fine, fine teacher shout, fine, fine, fine. Ooh, really good reading, Le Kang. Good girl. So here we have it. It looks like Mr. Keen has finally realized what he was doing was wrong and everyone is shouting and uh, dancing and celebrating. Have a look here. Can you read the final page for me, Mia? And the fine, fine children and... The fine, fine teacher lift, lifted Mr. Keen up and they carried him down the hallway and out the doors and through the town, up and down, in and out, and everywhere they went. The people said, what a fine, fine school with such fine, fine teachers and fine, fine children and a fine, fine principal. Amazing. Good girl. Lovely reading. So in the end, thankfully, Mr. Keene was able to realize his mistake. When Tilly approached him and told him about all the learning everyone else was missing out on at home, Mr. Keene realized school is a great place to be, but there are so many things that you can learn outside of school that are important, like how to swim, how to climb a tree, how to cook, how to dance maybe. All the things that you learn outside of school are just as important as the things that you learn 
inside of school. Okay, guys, raise your hand if you liked this story. I love this story. I think it's a great story. Ooh, so many people are raising their hand. Wow, most students in the class. Amazing. I'm glad that we all enjoyed this story. But that's all we have time for today. So really good job. Your homework, as always after a reading comprehension, is your reading comprehension. That is the end of our lesson. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.